Welcome back to the 2018 election recap with the Minnesota Realtors political field staff here today. Christine Berger and Matt Spellman are both joining me. Um, we'll get back on with it. Minnesota garnered lots of attention this year, Matt, on the national field. Can you kind of discuss why was Minnesota so important this year? Uh, yes, it's been a very interesting cycle here. Um, Minnesota was so heavily watched because we had a lot of key or targeted races on the national level. We had three open seats, um, and then we had one Senate special election, which we happened to have one of our own realtor members, Karen Housley, running. Um, unfortunately, she did not win. Um, but we had, um, in uh, CD1, we had Tim Walls retire to run for governor. Um, and in that race, that actually flipped from Democratic control to uh, Republican with Jim Hagedorn winning. Um, then in CD1, or CD2, we had, uh, we had a Democratic flip, uh, unseating a longtime incumbent, uh, Jason Lewis. Um, and then in CD3, we also had a longtime incumbent, Eric Paulson, Republican. Um, he lost to Dean Phillips, a uh, freshman Democratic uh, House member. Um, and then we also had in CD5, we had uh, Congressman Keith Ellison retire to run for Attorney General in the state of Minnesota. Um, that was a very heavily watched race. Um, and then up in CD8, um, up in the Duluth area, we had, um, we had Congressman Rick Nolan retire to run on the lieutenant governor ticket here um, uh, with Lori Swanson. And we had a Republican, Pete Stauber, former county commissioner here. He flipped that seat to Republican control. Um, so in general, the state of Minnesota was looked at to help determine control of Congress. And at the end of the day, it didn't really change as far as the number of uh, Republicans and Democrats after Correct. the election. Yes. So the Republicans picked up two in the north and in the south and lost two in the suburbs. That's correct. Good. Um, and Min, Min Arpak, they supported some of the candidates in those races? Yes. Uh, again, Minnesota Arpak was fortunate to uh, uh, have one of our own realtor members running. Um, Karen Housley, we had the chance, the trustees had the chance to interview her and her opponent, Tina Smith. Um, and through the process of uh, discussion, they, they thought it would be best to have, uh, to support a realtor running for Congress. Uh, again, unfortunately, she did not win. Um, and then we also, uh, the trustees decided to support Pete Stauber up in CD8. Um, we uh, again had uh, the opportunity to interview both him and his opponent, Joe Rodinovich. Um, the trustees had a long discussion, and they felt as though Pete Stauber would be the best uh, candidate for our positions. Um, and he did win, fortunately. So, And that's the way you do it, just like we do in the state races. Is we always interview them, always talk with them about yes. our issues, and figure out who's best on real estate issues, which is really what the association is focused on. Christine, how about in the state? We had lots of races in the state. We had the entire executive's um, branch go with the governor and the attorney general especially being a focus. Why don't you talk about our involvement in those? Right, at the state level we were involved in the governor's race and the trustees did invite both candidates. That was Jeff Johnson on the Republican side and um, Congressman Tim Walls on the DFL side in for interviews. Uh, asked them the same set of questions, and um, the, trustee, the trustees decided to endorse Tim Walls based on his answers. Um, he talked a lot about regulatory humility, which is something we haven't necessarily had the last few years. <laughs> and so moving forward, we're really looking forward to working with um, Governor-elect Walls on um, working with him as he sets up his administration, who will be the next Commissioner of Commerce. He's invited us to partake in that process. Um, again, we were 
looking forward to working with him on regulatory humility. And he also showed some excitement about some of our policy initiatives, our home ownership initiatives. So uh, looking forward to the next four years with working with him. Good. And the trustees made that decision on who to support for the gubernatorial election after the interviews. And the interviews were on housing related issues. Exclusively. Good. And how about in the legislature? We had 134 seats up in the legislature, one in the Senate, but it was a critical one in the Senate. Why don't we discuss the Senate race a little bit? Right. Senate District 13 was a special election. It was the only Minnesota Senate race uh, up on the ballot this session or this election season. And it would, uh, Senate District 13 is in the St. Cloud area. And the Senate was previously controlled by Republicans, uh, 34 to 33. And when uh, Lieutenant Governor Fishbach, or when she uh, became Lieutenant Governor, she had to vacate, as President of the Senate, she had to vacate her seat to become Lieutenant Governor. And so the Senate was tied 33-33. So they needed to have a special election for her seat. And it is a, a fairly conservative district up there, and so it's no surprise that our endorsed candidate, Jeff Howe, Representative Jeff Howe, won the special election for the Senate. And so their previous House member is now their Senate member. Perfect. And how about then the 134? 134 seats available in the House of Representatives. Uh, there was obviously a flip this year. It went from Republican control to Democratic control. Can you talk about what the RPAC trustees, how they kind of focus their attention in the race? Because I think a lot of folks might think that, well, you look at all 134 and you're involved in all 134, but it really doesn't work that way, does it? No, so you're right. The, the Minnesota House did flip. Uh, it went from Republican control now to Democratic control, and the Democrats control the, the Minnesota House 75 to 59. The, the Democrats picked up 18 seats. Interesting to note that of the 39 new members that will be serving in the Minnesota legislature, um, half of the newly electeds are women and half are men, which is kind of an exciting statistic. Um, the RPAC uh, involvement in those races, we had a total of 29 endorsements this, uh, this two-year cycle. Um, some of them were not on the ballot this, this year because either they were in the Minnesota Senate sure. or, or they actually retired or resigned. And so uh, we had 17 candidates that were on the ballot that we had endorsed this election. Of those 17, 12 were successful in their, in their election bids. Um, of the 17, 10 of those were realtors, four realtors lost, and six won. Okay. Terrific. And then how about the, um, the takeaways that you guys have? Christine, takeaways, you've been through a number of election cycles with mm -hmm. us now. What do you think you and the trustees will have as takeaways as we finish up this season and look at, unfortunately, in two years, another major election? <laughs> Fun never ends. So uh, people are announcing that they're running already for 2020. So <laughs> I think some of the biggest takeaways when I think back about the 2018 elections will be one, the high turnout, right? Minnesota had the highest turnout in the nation. We had 64% turnout, which for a midterm election is quite high. Um, we also, it was a typical midterm in the fact that. Um, the party that's opposite of the sitting president's party generally picks up seats, and we saw that to be the case in both the U.S. House and in the Minnesota House, being that the House, um, Minnesota House and the U.S. House flip control the Democratic. Um, we also did see that blue wave that people were talking about. Um, you know, the, we picked a, or the, the governor's seat uh, remained blue. Um, all the constitutional officers, the Secretary of State, the AG's office, the State Auditor, all, all Democratic seats. The Minnesota House turned uh, Democratic. Um, uh, Senate, or excuse me, Congressional Districts 2 and 3, the Phillips seat now, and the um, um, Angie Craig seat, those flipped from red to blue. But it wasn't a complete wave, right? There were two Congressional seats that, did, that flipped Republican. And that was um, CD1 in southern Minnesota and CD8 up in northern Minnesota with Brainerd and Duluth areas. Um, and so, so those were kind of the outliers, but really shows kind of the new trend that greater Minnesota tends to be more the conservative Republican areas of the state and that the, the metro area tends to be more the Democratic state, uh, Democratic areas of the state. And it's partially because the suburban areas are so flippy, as I like to say. They keep going back and forth, and which really ultimately um, 
decides control of the Minnesota House. Which is where you guys spend a lot of your time trying to look at the different candidates in those key seats. So if you know the seat's going to go, there's some districts where you just know it's going to be won by one party or the other. But you really focus a lot of attention being involved in only so many races because that's where it makes the difference. We do. We look at the matrix, we look at what realtors are running, and we look at where we can make a difference. Who's got tough seats, who helped us, and where, where do they need the help? Good. Uh, last thing, why don't we talk a little bit about politics, kind of at a ground level for the members. During the course of the session, which will be starting in a few weeks here, there'll be issues that we need their help with. Calls for action or attending the Housing Day at the Capitol, which is on March 4th. Can you please discuss why that's valuable? Oh, it's huge. Grassroots is where it's at. That's one of the best reasons that we are successful at the Capitol is because we have the grassroots advocacy of the realtors. We have 20,000 realtors across the state that can pick up the phone or send an email to their legislator. And having that type of power and influence, not a lot of groups have that. And so we're really lucky that we get to work with the realtors on that um, and, 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 and share that with them. Um, please, please, Minnesota Realtors, attend our, our Housing Day at the Capitol. If you see our calls for action, please click that button. It takes you 30 seconds. The legislators want to hear from their constituents. That's you. They hear from us all the time up at the Capitol, but you're the ones that matter. Terrific. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. We hope that you'll have a great day.